Do you want to learn how you can update values inside your Dynamo tables? In this video, that is exactly what I'm going to teach you how to do. Hi guys, my name is Sam with Complete Coding, where our aim is to make you into the best developer that you can be. In this video, we're going to be learning about Dynamo Update because I had a request from one of the viewers to teach them how to do that. This is going to be an extension of our existing Dynamo object, adding a new update method that allows us to update a single field on one of our items. So let's jump into the code and see how we can do that. Now that we're in the code, we can have a look at adding an update method to our Dynamo object. If we go into dynamo.js, we have already got the get method as well as the write method. So we're going to scroll down to the bottom and add a third, which is going to be update. This method is going to be an async method which is going to take a couple of parameters. The first one being a table name, as well as a primary key, a primary key value, an update key, and an update value. This can be an arrow function like that. And now we're into our code. So the way that we are going to update is using document client. So we're going to return document client dot update, pass in some parameters and use dot promise because that is what we like to do to make sure that it is running asynchronously. Now we've got that, all we need to do is define the params object. So const params is an object. This object has a table name of table name. It has a key. And this key is going to have an index of primary key and a value of primary key value. As well as having a key, we need to say how we want this parameter set to update a record. So update expression and for this one we're going to keep it simple when we pass in a new value and a new key we want that key to have the value of the update value which is pretty self-explanatory so what we're going to use is we're going to use a backtick string and we're going to say set we can then use the dollar sign in parentheses to pass in the update key. And we want to set that equal to a variable of the update value. The way that we do that in Dynamo is colon update value. And then after this, we need to pass some attributes. So this is a placeholder for a value that we are going to get from the update expression attributes. So expression attribute values. And this is going to have a key of, unsurprisingly, colon update value. And this is have a value of update value. 
So what this is doing is this is saying that the update value should be substituted anywhere we use the colon update value placeholder, which is here. So what we're basically doing is saying set the update key to equal the update value. Now that we have that, we can save this and that is our basic update completed. There are different expressions that you can use, but this is the one we're gonna go with for now. Now that we have this, we need to find a way to use it. To use this, I'm gonna create a new endpoint and in our endpoints folder and call it update player score dot js and what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the create player score copy everything from in here and paste it into our update player score now with an update where we're trying to just change the score we don't need to pass in a name so we can delete that from the body schema as we scroll down, we get the user from the event body, but this time it's not going to be the user. It's just going to be an object with a score on it. And we can actually get rid of this line here. So this endpoint is going to take the path parameter of an ID and an event body of score and then we're going to update the score id with the score value that's been passed in so this is where we can start removing some things so we can delete all of this and we don't need to return the new user but in here what we can do is we can go with a const res equals await dynamo dot update and this is the update function that we've just created on this we can pass in an object and that object requires a couple of parameters first it requires a table name and conveniently for us, the table name is already in the environment variables from when we did the create player score file. As well as the table name, we have a primary key. And on this table, the primary key is just ID. We now need a primary key value. So that's what is the value of ID for the record that we want to update. In this case, it is the ID on the path parameters. We also need to define an update key. So this is the field that we are wanting to update. This is going to be score. And finally, an update value of score, because we want to set the field of score to have the value passed up. Now that we have created the update, what we can do is go into our serverless.yaml file and add that new update player score endpoint. What we can do is go to our create player score, copy that and paste it in. We then need to change the function name to update player score. It's now lambda's endpoints update player score dot handler. And finally, the URL wants to be up date dash player score with an ID. And we can actually change this from a post request to a put request as that is in more in line with doing an update. Now, if we go back into our terminal and run SLS deploy, 
what will happen is we will create this new update player score endpoint, which we'll be able to test in Postman. Now that that has finished deploying, what we can do is we can scroll up and find our new put endpoint. We can copy that URL and head over into our terminal. I've already logged into my account and I can see that we have the player points table and we have a pair of accounts. One is Tom and one is Claire. Tom's ID is 30342 and currently has a score of 14. So what we can do is we can go over into Postman and see if we can do an update onto that record. So I'm going to paste in the URL and his ID was 30342. We need to change this from a GET request to a PUT request. And finally, we need to add a body. It's going to be a JavaScript body or JSON, should I say? So raw and JSON. And we're going to start by just passing up an empty object. If I hit send now, what we'll get is we get a 400 response saying that score is a required field. That is because if we go back into our code, and into our update player score.js, we have a body schema that requires score. So if you've been watching our hooks with validation lessons, then you'll be able to tell that the score is required and it was really easy to set that up. If we go back to our request, we can amend this by adding a score and this time, let's say the score is going to be 23. If we now send this, we get a 200 response. So if we go back into our terminal, refresh this page, we can see that Tom's score has been updated to 23. This is great and is exactly what we expect. So in this video, we have learned how we can use the document client dot update to update a field in a row of our Dynamo tables. This can be really useful when you want to update just one field, whether it's a score, a name, they might change their email address or something like that. And you want to update that, but you don't want to have to download the whole of the row, update the field, and then write the whole row back again. It's much more efficient just to update that single field. So if you've learned something new in this video, make sure to give it a like, as it really helps YouTube suggest this video to more developers just like yourselves. And make sure to subscribe down here, because the next video we're going to be learning about how we can add querying to our Dynamo tables so that we can get lots of records that are very similar much quicker than reading the whole database. Thank you and I'll see you in that video.